I went through the Bible and found six particular places where Jesus himself said, you can't be my disciple unless, or you Mm. will be my disciple if, and those six things to me encapsulate what it means to be a disciple. Dr. Barna, I know that as you have studied and stuff, you've, you have found that there are six things that have, as you've looked at God's word that really make a person a disciple. Talk us through those six things and how we can help disciple our children as we ourselves become true disciples of the Lord. Yeah, it was fascinating to me in doing the, the research before sitting down to write the book and put all the research together and whatnot. I, I read dozens and dozens of, of books related to family and parenting and worldview and children and child development, all these things, and discipleship. And, and one of the things that shocked me was in none of those did I find any of them that went back and said, well, if we're supposed to be disciples of Jesus, what does he consider a disciple? Mm-hmm. And so I went through the Bible and found six particular places where Jesus himself said, you can't be my disciple unless, or you Mm. will be my disciple if, and those six things to me encapsulate what it means to be a disciple. And I think it's important for our discussion here because we keep talking about, yeah, make your children into disciples, you know, or, you know, me talking about raise spiritual champions. Okay. What does that mean from Jesus' point of view? All right. So, you know, if we go back to the epistle of John, in John 8, Jesus kicked us all off, you know, when he said, you will be my disciples if you obey my teaching, okay? Yeah. Then a little bit later on, John 13, he said, you will be my disciples if you truly and deeply love one another, mm. uh, you know, the other disciples. Thirdly, then he came back in John 15, and he said, you will be my disciple if you produce a lot of spiritual fruit, i.e. go make more disciples, mm-hmm. you know, as well as other things. Okay, and then in the the epistle of Luke, you know, the book of Luke, three times in chapter 14, Jesus addresses the same thing. Here he takes the other point of view as opposed to, you know, you will be my disciple if. In Luke, he says, you cannot be my disciple unless, and firstly, he says, you love God so deeply, so profoundly, so robustly that it appears that all the other things that you think you love, you it, it appears that you hate them in right. comparison to how much you love God. That's how deep your love for him has to be. That's what will make you a disciple. And then a little bit later, he says, and by the way, you cannot be my disciple unless you pick up your cross and carry it, which in Roman culture at that time where he was saying this would have meant that you've got to give in to the prevailing authority. Who's the prevailing authority? God. So it means you have to recognize God as being the only authority in your life. Mm -hmm. And then finally, in that chapter, he ends it up by saying, and by the way, you cannot be my disciple unless you surrender everything in your life in order to be my follower, in order to know me, to love me, to serve me. And so you look at those six things like, whoa, that's what a disciple is. And that's a tall order. But it's imperative that we understand not how America defines a disciple. Because I looked at that, and what I found is that in our country, we tend to think of a disciple as someone who believes that God exists, who believes that Jesus existed, and who says, and you know what? I'm trying my best to be a good person. And I think that Jesus was a good person, and I think it'd be just swell if I was like him. And that's as far as it goes. That's what we think of being discipleship, good intentions. Yeah. That's not what it's about. Um, It's so fun. I'm actually reading through the epistles right now. Um, I'm I'm reading through the book of John again. I finished reading through the whole Bible again. And and I was like, I I think before I go back to the Old Testament, I'm going to start with the New Testament again and just read um, through the Gospels and through the letters. And and there's just so much in there that's so relevant. But I think the Old Testament um, is so so important for us to know and to study as well. And as I'm thinking about what our purpose is in life and teaching our kids what their purpose is in life. And I've, I've read this before on the podcast, but it's Ecclesiastes 12, 13. And it says the end of the matter, all has been heard, fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. Like that's it. If you want to just sum up 
all of those things in a nutshell. Like this is really what it looks like to be a disciple, fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. And that's it, you guys. I mean, that's what we're trying to teach our kids to do on a daily basis. And it is, again, it's, it's hard. It can be really, really hard because it takes a lot of intention. It's not as easy as just putting them in front of a TV screen or video games or even throwing a book at them. I mean, you know, you can give your kids all the books, but if you're not giving them the word of God, uh, none of that's going to matter anyway. Homeschool Insights is sponsored by CTC Math. If you're looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com and try it for free. For more great homeschool inspiration and resources, listen to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 